Uh, and this is something that we've learned from my work at the uh, Corona Committee, at the Berlin Corona Committee. The reason is probably that this is a program that uh, was m made up uh, years ago, probably 10 years ago. Mm. And it's nothing, I mean, it is sinister, but it's nothing that you have to resort to um, conspiracy. What do uh, the Google masters want us to believe the today? The pharmaceutical industry and the tech industry trying to make as much money as possible. So this is nothing new. This has happened mm. uh, 100 years ago. Let's look and listen to germ warfare. The gatekeeper, as he practically feeds lines to his guests, Dr. Reiner Fulmich, in the but Battle of would, Ideas. Why would YouTube? Fulmich, who sounds like, like he's Google pushing a honeypot campaign of his own videos. for an IMF what, data what you collection think is company. The, the motivation there? Um, I think, I, I think within Google or Facebook or any other of the social media, there's also a power struggle going on mm. be, behind, behind the curtains. Um, my video for some reason was not deleted. Maybe mm. it, it wasn't taken down. Uh, and I think in the meantime, um, uh, it got 1.3 million views. Um, one of the reasons maybe that I'm a lawyer, one of the reasons mm. maybe that I'm very well connected with other really much more powerful lawyers than myself, mm. um, but it's still, um, what, what's going on is that uh, only with the manipulation of the mass media is it possible to keep the panic going. If the mass media, just like the alternative media, um, started to look at the actual facts, mm. then immediately this whole bubble would burst. It would be oh. over. All right. Well, as we come in for a landing, um, people are asking where can they follow uh, the court case or the series of court cases that, that you are now involved in? Where, where can one go? Um, there is a German website uh, which um, which will which will um, describe what's going on in real time. Um, there's also our Corona Committee. I think that's the best place to turn to the Corona Committee in Germany. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, have everything, all the sources, all the references that uh, we've been talking about, including this journalist whose video got uh, taken down. We're gonna have an English version of that. Um, we're going to have all that on our website, the Corona Committee's website. Uh, unfortunately, it's still in German. The, the, the uh, things that we quote one uh, from are not in German. They're in, mostly in English. Uh, but I'm going to do my very best uh, to make sure that this website is going to be available in English as well with, over the next week or so. All of a sudden, people like you and myself and all the others are starting to ask questions, and that's that's causing problems for them, and they're they're not going to be able to overcome this. May I ask you one last question as a devil's advocate kind of question? But this has come up a lot over the months in conversations I've had with people, and they say, yes, but what would you have done? Uh, there was a pandemic declared, and the government acted in what they thought was a, uh, a you know, in the best interest of the country, uh, using the precautionary measure, a uh, principle. Uh, the answer is very clear. I know, and every law student knows from the first semester on, that if you have to make a difficult choice, uh, as a judge, you have to make a decision. You cannot look only at one side of the story. So the biggest mistake that was done, and I would not have made this mistake, is that they only listened to one side of the story, to the Dresden side story. They should have Audiato at Altera Park. They should have listened to the other side because they were all there. Uh, Ioannidis was there. Levitt was there. They were all there. It was. It would have been easy to talk to them, but they didn't want to hear them because had they heard them, they would not have been able to start this pandemic. So, are you suggesting then that maintaining the status quo, for example, might have been preferable? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. These two actors are allowed to speak publicly because they keep their audience believing, oh, not to worry, there's an unknown group of good guys all lawyered up who will save the day in some far off of land by suing the government. <laughs> and the result of the lawsuit does not matter because they'll be tracking witnesses. They have lots of computer cheerleaders who love them. Back then, it was my legal Let's hero. Let's do the entire in the interview and try to find uh, something Justice that you Lewis didn't already uh, know. Brandeis, who stopped all this. 
then it was the um, uh, uh, oil industry and the financial industry. Well, yeah, I like to say when we talk about conspiracy theories, it's just another way of saying whistleblower. True. There are a lot of whistleblowers uh, mm. who are actually supporting us. That's not because of my legal work. Uh, mm. That's only part of the reason. Uh, but um, I'm one of four members of the German or Berlin Corona Investigative mm. Committee. And through our work, which should have been done by the government, uh, but through our work, we talked to dozens and dozens of highly acclaimed international Take a look at this Transparency International IMF Covert Identification 2019 put together all these little pieces of the puzzle so that mm. the picture, uh, the real picture becomes clearer and clearer. Well, very weird people. A, a short summary of, of you, dramatizing uh, youngsters start, on a I mission suppose, to solve that world video problems. Of yours that I think everybody who's interested in this pandemic has watched. Um, that we all know that one um, in which you basically read out what it is that you setting out to do which I think we can discuss obviously in this in this conversation um, where do we start yeah the, the, these uh, guys it, you know, really started in, feed I think in a Maylos, general yeah. faith in science yeah well a blind um, faith let's start at the beginning right. uh, as far as I can I and they reinforce and, uh, the fear said, of a communicable just, disease um, uh, the I battle have of ideas and five thousand people who signed a petition uh, which um, I invented so that we would be able to get clear answers from the government. So come on over, I think we can do something about this. And then I came back and uh, she and myself and two other lawyers whom I had known from my work at Transparency International decided we're going to do something that the government should have done. We're going to um, have a, a Corona uh, investigative committee so that we'll know what we're really dealing with. And the four major questions that we asked ourselves were actually three questions is how dangerous is this? Is this a pandemic or what? Yeah, and how, yeah. And, no, and I'm, I'm, I'm just making a note. So it's how dangerous is this pandemic? Yes. Uh, two, um, how um, good are these PCR tests? Yes. Are they, do they give you credible results or what? And three is really two questions in one. Um, what are the, what's the collateral damage that these anti-corona measures are doing both yeah. health wise and as far as the economy is concerned now the first question was easily answered uh because um it, there had been studies uh, conducted by among others this very very famous scientist from the most actually the most quoted scientist in the world uh from uh, stanford university and uh and Yates, uh, mm. yeah but first it was john ioannidis from stanford university and he had conducted a study that came to the conclusion in his county, Santa Clara County, which came to the conclusion that um, uh, the uh, mortality is about on par with the flu, with the common yeah. flu. And it just a couple of days ago, and I think this video is going to go up, it's a short one uh, today, a couple of days ago, the Off Guardian reported um, that the World Health Organization disclosed in a meeting on October the 5th that it assumes that around 10% of the world's population is infected with SARS-CoV-2. This means that SARS-CoV-2 is roughly as dangerous as the seasonal flu. So there we have it. Um, and uh, it? because, you know, this is the global there population have it. is What's roughly 7.8 billion. No, that's an infection fatality rate, or IFR, of roughly 0.14%, right in line with, with the seasonal flu predictions of many experts all around the world. Yes. So that was an easy question to answer. and. If you look at Sweden, if you look at... Yeah, that's um, an easy question to answer. Uh, now South let's Korea get into the countries. difficult, Sweden hard for us cavemen to understand now, stuff. That's an infection fatality where we need to IAR trust the priests of modern percent. science. Right Anybody with a lab coat on television is telling us the truth and we must yes. follow so with absolute And you said faith. exactly, exactly what you just said, that um, at that stage, uh, all indications show that it's just probably a slightly severe flu a committee um but um drosten is the one who was one of the leading forces 12 years ago during the swine flu claiming that if you if, if we don't get vaccinated millions of people are going to die turns out that was a mild flu that was all there's to it now it was astonishing to me to see this very same person do the same thing all over uh, again uh, at the beginning of this year without anybody realizing or obviously with 
everybody having forgotten about how he is was totally discredited 12 years ago. Um, so what, uh, as far as these uh, PCR tests are concerned, we now even have uh, Dr. Yaden. You mentioned him. Yeah. Uh, he's the guy who was. He's a heavyweight. I From mean, Pfizer. He's, he's, advisor yeah he was their vice president for 16 years and um and he's also their chief science officer and he too he came out in a month ago he came out uh, with a paper i can't find it here but at any rate um with a paper saying that these pcr tests we have to immediately stop testing because they don't do what they're supposed to do or what they what people claim they can do they don't tell you anything about infections they give you almost a hundred percent false positives sometimes they work but then you still get 94% false positives. But that's a big problem that you mentioned right there with the PCR testing because this has been global. I mean, here in South Africa, uh, it's what's been used uh, for months now. It's what's led to the lockdowns. It's what led to all the data on um, on death certificates. That's false. I mean, how do you all how of do the policies were a result of computer of modeling predictions? Well. I think they fabricated the only way numbers. to do it is to apply as much pressure as possible, legal pressure. It's up to the courts now. Mm. Now, um, but these are the very same people who then uh, decided that we're going to have a pandemic in early 2020. Yeah, I just just quickly before we go on to that third that third uh, point um, from earlier that you were mentioning, uh, the the the, unre the unreliability of the PCR testing um, ha has been quite. Uh, controversial and up for for grabs in terms of you know challenging but the problem here is that it seems to be the state versus the people scenario you you is there supposed the to be a choice a word, and therefore you're are we called, missing um, out on other possible uh, fringe. scenarios you're called fringe you on the on the extreme why would why would uh why would you question this when many scientists are happy with the pcr testing well it's that's it's not true um last night we had a huge international Zoom, not Zoom, but video conference. And uh, we asked a number of different scientists from, uh, scientists from all over the world. Some of them, we had questioned in our uh, Corona committee mm. about the PCR tests. And they all agree, these PCR tests cannot tell you anything about infections. In particular, not when they're set to uh, anything over 35 cycles. So you have to know how this works. A PCR test um, is conducted by using a swab and uh, this swab is then uh, the, the uh, molecules that are being taken are then have to be amplified because you can't see them you can't see these molecules or fragments uh, from molecules in order to make them visible to the human eye you have to kind of blow them up amplify them that's what it's called mm, and it's also too sensitive much too sensitive that's why it picks up that's why we're saying after a cutoff of I think 60 is what the scientists told us last night. Mm. Everyone is positive because the audience must leave the show thinking that the test and is too that, um, sensitive up, as opposed uh, to the common cult, which is not a being a sensitive virus. enough, yes. so that just let adds alone to the, um, the entirely the fake. Absolutely, yeah. You, uh, right, and then your third question. That was the biggest thing because it, obviously everybody uh, knows something about what these anti-corona measures do to your life. Uh, where having to wear masks, um, yeah. having to socially distance, um, people being forced to die by themselves in isolation without their loved ones being able to be with them. Um, those are the things that we also looked at. And it turns out there's no um, final evidence yet, but it turns out that incidents of suicide are uh, going way up. Like, for example, there's a hospital uh, called the John Muir Hospital Center in, in, um, in California. And they reported, I think in March or April, they reported as many suicides in one month as they normally have in one year. Incidents of domestic violence are wow. going way up. That's yeah. incredible. And things are going to get a whole lot worse. People are going to die, not because mm. of COVID-19, because that's probably just like the flu but and things are going to get a whole lot worse people are going to die not because mm. of covid-19 because that's probably just like the flu because of covid -19, because that's probably just like the flu but because of the anti corona measures and uh, last night let's see if i can find this um, the uh, uh, there were some actual figures that came out um, and I was able to quote some of this stuff. Well, at any rate, 
it it just doesn't make any sense, and that's what people are beginning to realize. Um, and and that's why this. Mm. I think there's even an internal power struggle within the the WHO, within the World Health Organization, and within the uh, German RKI, uh, which th they have a lot of good people working for them. But it's at their it's the heads of these organizations that seem to be under the control of someone else. So, Dr. Reiner, what what is now happening next on your agenda? So, you've now mentioned the three questions. Mm. Yeah, um, we we decided that the only way to kind of stop this as quickly as possible is by it's like a lawsuit a gigantic lawsuit and that's what we're working on uh last i can't tell you any names right now Ooh, but they're really, really a gigantic lawsuit who are with us, powerful players and uh pretty soon i think next week or so suing the government announced that we have this large coalition of <laughs> because the government's the bad guy um, who are going to and they tell everybody what to do probably the largest tort lawsuit ever uh, to be filed either in the United States or in Canada, because in the United States and in Canada, the legal system is, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm, uh, I, I, I grew up in both systems here in Germany and in, uh, in, in the Anglo-American system, as far as I'm concerned, it's far more advanced than ours. Um, in particular, when it comes to the law of evidence, hearing witnesses, looking at uh, documentary evidence, that's the kind of thing that we need now in order to get to the bottom of this, in order to uncover the truth, we need to question witnesses, and we need to question witnesses and uh, look at all the documentation that is there. Um, the, and uh, look at all the documentation that is there. Um, the uh, uh, Anglo-American system of or American system of pretrial discovery all is right. extremely helpful. Here comes and, more brainwashing. Um, even, it doesn't really make much of a difference what the outcome of this will be. But as long as witnesses are getting deposed, we can um, even it doesn't really make much of a difference what the outcome of this will be. But as long as witnesses are getting deposed, we can use the fruits of this anywhere in the world. As long as witnesses are getting deposed, we can use the fruits of this anywhere in the world. Use the factual knowledge that we gain from this in any court in the world. Uh, we're very optimistic that we're going to win this mm. case because it's it's easy somebody is lying we have um i don't want to go down sort of uh conspiratorial rabbit holes but you have mentioned um the gates foundation and they always come up that that foundation always comes up when it comes to vaccinations pharmaceuticals lobbying this kind of thing um do you have any kind of uh target on, on them and if so then what would what would be in that target well, this is a very recent development. Uh, we have known this all along. I mean, there have been rumors that uh, is that really and truly uh, those people with a lot of money, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, have been trying to take over more and more governmental functions. And that's probably one of the reasons why Bill Gates, when he was interviewed by one of the public uh, television stations here in Germany, um, said that we are going to vaccinate 7 billion people. Now, who is we? It's not our government it's not the american government so who is we and that's one of the things we have to be very careful about and that's one of the things we will uh, think about as soon as we stop this um scandal i'm not going to call it a pandemic anymore this fake pandemic uh there are going to be uh <clears throat> necessary um, socio-political realignments that we have to make one of the things is think about social justice and of course social injustice uh, curb the power of corporations. Same thing that was done by Justice um, Brandeis 100 years ago. Curb the power of corporations and um, reinstall democracy. Because what's happening right now is much of what used to be governmental powers have already been taken over by uh, large corporations. Like YouTube decides or Facebook decides what they're going to delete. Now, what is that? That's not really democracy. They're much mm. too powerful. Uh, in, in New York, same story. There were there were a number of hospitals which were overrun by patients, but by far not all of them. Mm. And many of these instances happened because of the panic, because people who otherwise would have just stayed at home for right. a couple of days, a week or so, they went to the hospitals. And many of these people then received wrong treatment, um, wrong doses, for example, of hydroxychloroquine, yeah. four or five times as high as they should have been uh, treated with. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a conversation on its own, I guess, um, HCQ. But, um, how how is it possible, um, Doctor, that 
the whole world is, is following the same script. This is something that I, I can't wrap, wrap my head around. Is it group? Yeah, that's what everybody's asking. How can the whole world uh, kind of uh, jump off a cliff at the very same time? Well, you answered the question by asking, how can it be that they're following the same script? Because it is the same script. Because this has been trained for, this is what I get from this uh, journalist whose video was deleted from uh, YouTube yesterday, but we're going to put it back up on a different channel. Um, that's what I learned, uh, from, and the Corona Committee learned from listening to him. We listened to him, we heard him uh, a couple of weeks ago, but his video, which is a 38-minute piece, uh, was so clear about what he, through his research, learned that the, the conclusion can only be that this is a script that was invented by others, of course, by the same people who we were talking about earlier, and who are trying, I'm not going to say they're trying to take over the world, but they're trying to impose um, their goals and, and their ideas on the rest of the world. It's, it's in the same vein as uh, Bill Gates saying, we are going to vaccinate 7 billion people. Those are the people who we're dealing with, but what they, they're not used to uh, people not um, agreeing with them. Mm. And what's happened here is something that the Silicon Valley types probably cannot quite fathom. You can't, of course you can program machines and maybe mm. you can program some people, but you cannot program all the people. So, I mean, is it is it possible to, to say that most of the world's governments have made a mistake? So, I mean, is it is it possible to, oh, to say I that get it. most of the world's governments have made a mistake. Everybody just made a absolutely, mistake. Absolutely. That so, I mean, is it, is it possible to, yeah, to say no. that most of the world's governments have made a mistake? Absolutely. 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 And that's the other um, big problem we're dealing with here. Um, they've made huge mistakes. They should have known better. Everybody should know that if you make a, a if you have to make a very, very grave decision, like suspending uh, the uh, co everybody's constitutional rights, not just here in Germany, but also in the United States, um, by, um, by um, well, taking measures that are definitely going to kill people, uh, that are definitely going to make people sick, and that you that, that nobody would take if they had any remnant of empathy, mm. like forcing people to die completely isolated by themselves without their loved ones being with them. So if you make such a decision, you cannot just rely on mm. one opinion. In this case, Drosten's opinion, which everybody else and kind of uh, copied. Yeah, you haven't mentioned Imperial College. You, you haven't mentioned Imperial College. 